What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today we are finally picking up where we left off in chapter 5 of the story of our faith, the preaching office. <laughs> started this series where I talked about the nuances of the Christian faith, uh, a, a, a confession worth dying for. Do what we believe teach and confess as Christians, does it have such merit to it that we would willingly lay down our lives rather than abandon it? If a sword were put to our neck and we were commanded to denounce our faith, would we say, strike it off? Or would we say, I don't believe? Now, Christians, I think by and large, we feel like we would uh, go to our grave rather than deny our faith. But there are times and circumstances where, well, in this world, we have different denominations. We have different confessions. We're not united. And while we say in the creed we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, meaning that what we see as broken, Christ has united in a mysterious unity that only he's allowed to see. But we need to know the nuances of our faith. We need to know the history, the heritage of our faith. Where did these denominations come from? Where did these differences of opinion on, on the Bible and what it says come from? And what does the Bible actually say? So in chapter 1, the first aspect of our faith is that there is a God and we are not that God. The second aspect of our faith is that of original sin or concupiscence, that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we sin against God in thought, word, and deed by what we do and what we don't do, that left to our own devices we will choose evil over good. In the third chapter of the story of our faith, we learned of the Son of God who stepped down from heaven to redeem mankind by sacrificing his body and blood in their place on the cross and enduring in their place the wrath of God. And in chapter 4, where we left off, let me uh, grab my faithful book of Concord here. Chapter 4, where we left off, justification. That we are justified freely by God's grace through faith in Christ. Now, going back to chapter 1, we, that there is a God, and, and nature certainly reveals to us that there is. Even in its brokenness, we can see the original intent of the order and the design. But we've talked about how we can't know that there's a God unless he's revealed himself. And he's revealed himself in the person of his son, in the flesh. Now, so there is a God... The world is broken by man. Jesus has come and died for us, and we are justified freely by his grace. Now we come to chapter 5, the office of the ministry. How do we receive the benefits? Jesus died 2,000 years ago, and there are denominations that love to sing a song called There's Power in the Blood, but how do we have access to it? How does what happened 2,000 years ago come to us today? Chapter 5, the ministry. So that we may obtain this faith, the ministry of teaching the gospel and administering the sacraments was instituted. Through the word and sacraments, as through instruments, the Holy Spirit is given. John 20, 22. He works faith when and where it pleases God. John 3, 8. In those who hear the good news that God justifies those who believe that they are received into grace for Christ's sake. This happens not through our own merits, but for Christ's sake. Our churches condemn Anabaptists and others who think that through their own preparations and works, the Holy Spirit comes to them without the external word. The office of the ministry, the preaching office as the Lutheran fathers called it was instituted by God, Allah John 20, 22, that the church, by preaching his word, the pastors, by preaching his word, the pastors, by administering rightly his sacraments of baptism, of confession and absolution, and of the Lord's Supper, give freely by God's grace the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit 
works through the preached word. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. So God has ordained in this world men to preach that word to us, through which the Holy Spirit works faith solely on account of Christ's merit, not ours. They administer the sacraments of baptism, where we are buried with Christ into his death and raised with him to newness of life, in the confession and absolution, where we bear our souls to our confessor as to God, and the confessor, by the command and in the stead of his Lord Jesus Christ, forgives sins, Allah, John 20, 22. Yes, a pastor can say by God's authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. A pastor can say that. He is given the authority, the office of the ministry, and this is to our great benefit. So while we stand that there is a God, and we stand that we are not him, and we stand that this God has sent his Son to justify us freely by his grace, we also stand on the office of the ministry that God has ordained these men and put them into our lives as under-shepherds of the Great Shepherd. You see, today in mainline American Christianity, as in the days of the Reformation, people thought that they could attain to the Holy Spirit by their own works, by spiritualism, by mysticism, by self-meditation and reflection and getting those little goose pimples. They thought that too. And so that's why the Lutheran Confession state in Article 5 on, on, on the Office of the Ministry that we, we condemn the people like the Anabaptists or anyone who thinks that they can achieve these gifts by their own merit. These are gifts given by God's grace. And they are given to his people by the men he has placed in the church as under-shepherds to Christ our great shepherd. And this is to our great benefit. What a blessing to have a God that has given to us such a gift as the office of the ministry. I'm so excited to be back and doing this, and I'm so excited I picked the book right back up. We're going to get into Article 6 in the next episode, New Obedience. So are these five thus far confessions worth dying for? Leave me a comment in the comment section below, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, all notifications, to get more good content in the future. And join me at soundcloud.com backslash Lutheran Lemonade for a weekly podcast where we sit down and have a good pint of Lutheran Lemonade <clears throat> beer and discuss theology to gladden the heart of man. Until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.